Hi, welcome to this first video stitch tutorial. My name is Niels and today I want to show you how to create a fully spherical panoramic video like this one. Now this is done by taking six single videos and stitching them together with video stitch. Here is the interactive results and the source videos. Now the six videos are GoPro Hero 2 footage, but uh, you could use GoPro Hero 3 or any type of camera array as long as you can create a calibration for it. Alright, so let's create a new project, take our six videos and drop them on Video Stitch. As you can see the output interactive and process tabs are not available anymore. Well. This is because at this point we have the videos, but we don't have the calibration to put them together, to map them onto a sphere. What I call a calibration here is simply a panorama project created with a third party panoramic photography stitching software. Um, you can set that in your preferences and there are two softwares you can use. The first one being being PTQA. Uh, PTQA is a uh, very nice, very convenient to use uh, professional panoramic stitching software. And your second choice is Hugin. Hugin is a free open source project uh, panorama stitching software as well. So what we want to do is extract images from those six videos. Uh, we'll go to edit extract stills and then use these stills in the calibration software by checking the open calibration tool checkbox. Now as you can see Video Stitch extracted six images out of the six videos and passed them to PTGUI. Just press cancel here um, since we can set these values manually and here is the align button uh, that I would use if I wanted to create a new calibration, a new PTQA project from start. But in this case, I'm just going to use a template, uh, which is an existing PTQA project uh, that you select and apply as a model to the currently loaded images. can save a template to reuse it by using the save as template function and then apply it and as you can see the calibration applies. Now if we wanted to create a new project we would hit the align image button and then manually add control points uh, which are matching features between these images. Then manually optimize the project until we get the result we want. So once the images are stitched properly in PTGUI, um, we just want to save the project with its default name now. And that's an important detail. As you can see here, I've saved the project along the original footage and that allows for video stitch when I close PTQA to automatically load that project and convert it to a video stitch project. Video stitch will automatically replace the inputs in the PTQA panorama project by video inputs for video stitching. You could as well use the import calibration uh, menu under file import calibration or you could just take your PTGUI project and drop it on video stitch like this. As you can see here there is a frame number pattern at the end of the input images that were used by PTGUI um, and that's what allows video stitch to know which video which video the um, images were extracted from and and then properly replace those by the videos uh, when we import the calibration. And there it is. Um, the video is being stitched right now. 
um, the preview that you see here is actually a live preview of the videos being stitched. So uh, one thing we could do is lower the output size uh, to get a faster rendering. Uh, just click apply here and as you can see um, it's uh, a little faster rendering here uh, which gives a good preview of uh, what the stitch video will be like. Now this was just a preview so let's save it as a video file. Um, you can set uh, your output file settings here and uh, here what I'm doing uh, is setting the start time and stop time which are the in and out point of the sequence I want to render. Uh, change the name, select the graphic card you want to use and then just hit process to launch rendering. And that's it. As you can see, Video Stitch is now rendering. Uh, it goes pretty fast. And one of the things that is really nice about this speed is that it leaves time, uh, leaves room for uh, experimentation. Uh, and here is the final video, ready for further post-production or publishing on the web with Carpano, Lucid or Pano 2 VR players. Alright, I hope this tutorial gave you a good overview of Video Stitch's workflow. Alright, stay tuned for more tutorials on Video Stitch's workflow. Uh, we'll be covering new features very soon. And for those of you who are new to panoramic video and panoramic photography, uh, we'll provide tutorials for calibration as well. So keep an eye on videostitch.com and share your work. We're very excited to see what Video Stitch will allow you to produce.